Welcome to today's video on using uh, Git. Uh, in this video, you will learn how to use Git in VS Code. So Git is a version and control system, which can be used for many different tasks. But in this uh, course, we will basically be using it to ensure that the code you have on your computer is synchronized with the code that is on Git GitHub and the code which your group members have on their uh, computers and at the same time keeping track of which changes you are making to the code uh, as you are developing it. So the central concepts in Git uh, is that we talk about a local repository uh, when we talk about a folder on your own computer, so a folder with some code in it and some results perhaps in it. Uh, and then we talk about a remote repository, which is the same thing, just on something remote uh, more specifically, it will be a GitHub repository, so a folder on some other uh, computer. All repositories that are Git repositories are, are defined in terms of branches. So you can have a different branch, which is simply a different uh, track or copy of the code in the repository. You will only be working with a main branch, but in principle, you can have additional branches and you can develop new stuff there and then merge them onto the uh, main branch uh, later on. That's sort of the more general purpose of, uh, of using Git. You only need to work with the main branch uh, uh, in this course. All Git repositories have a .git ignore file, which have some rules for which file they will not uh, synchronize. And a, .git, and a .git hidden folder with so-called diff and header files containing the history of changes. You actually don't need to edit these or go into them, but it's good to know that they are there. For example, now I'm in the lectures repository and we can open up the git ignore file that is there and sort of it has some rules for what it's what it should, should ignore. You don't need to, want to understand this, so let's just, let's just close, uh, close the file uh, uh, again um, and go back to the notebook. So, When you need to use the, the git commands, you basically need to use them for downloading and for uploading code. And if you want to download code with uh, uh, with git, uh, you are doing what is what is called a fetch and a merge. And a fetch that is you get a list of the remotely added or changed files, and then you merge in uh, all uh, these changes to a local uh, repository. Combined, these two things is called a pull command. Uh, so you pull down the uh, content that is in the remote repository that you don't have on your, in your local repository. Then if you have mentioned, made some changes, you're doing a, a three-step thing to upload these, these changes. Uh, you're staging by defining a list of files you have added or changed. You are uh, committing uh, by labeling this stage package and then you are pushing by applying these changes to the remote repository, assuming you are an admin on that repository and therefore that, that can be done. These are the underlying commands that Git are using. In practice in VS Code, code these boil down to two commands, a commit all, and uh, which is basically a stage and a commit, uh, and uh, a sync, which is a, a first a pull and then a push. So downloading uh, uh, contents and then perhaps uploading content if you have something in you. But sometimes it's good to know what the underlying git commands are if you get some, some errors or searching for doing some more advanced stuff. But let's try this out in practice. That's the, that's the best way to learn this. To get started, you need to have your own repository. Uh, you can do that by following this, uh, this guide here, make your own GitHub Classroom repository, whereby you will be uh, uh, getting a, a um, repository which you can be used uh, for making assignments and so on in the course. My exam repository is, is a repository we have here and I can click, click on the link and it will open up this repository and we can see how that repository looks like on GitHub. So we can see the folders, we can see the files and we can see sort of how the, the readme file uh, look. So if I go back to, to, to VS Code, there is a task for you that you should try to follow these, these, these nine uh, points here where you uh, get to understand how you can make a change locally and then 
make it appear on, on, on GitHub later on. So it's a good idea for you to try this on your own. Uh, uh, otherwise, you can, you can watch me uh, uh, do a version of this. So for me to do this, I, uh, I basically need to uh, clone this repository. So the way that you can do that is you can go into command control palette, control shift P, and you can write uh, clone. And now it's, it, you have the git clone command. I press enter on that. I paste in the link to my repository. I press enter. And now it's asking me where do I want to, uh, to save this. And I'm basically uh, saving it somewhere and it's downloading. And then I'm adding it to my current uh, workspace. So now when I've added it, um, you can see that if I sort of uh, fold my, my latest repository, I can now see my, my new repository here with the folders and the files uh, in it. Uh, so now what we want to do is that we want to be able to make some, some, some changes to this and upload it to Git. So let us open the readme file here. And let's say I want to change the name of the group. So I said it is called teachers. Uh, and now I can immediately see that it's beginning to do something by the lines over here. So now I can actually click there and then I can see, okay, what has changed since the last time you synchronized with GitHub? Oh, the red thing is for stuff you have removed and the green thing is for, for, is for what you have, uh, you have added. Uh, so if, if I, for example, just remove this line here, then there will just be a red thing that this has, has been moved. You will also see that there are sort of a way to go back and forth here. So you can go, you can go to the next uh, change or the previous change and sort of move back for that. You can also do that by pressing uh, commands on, on the keyboard. Uh, Alt F3 will go through all of, of, of the changes. You can also sort of revert a change if you want that by pressing here, then it goes back to how, how, how it looked, looked before. But let's say I want this to be the teacher's repository and I want it to be Yebe and I want it to be Asker. So now I will save this file by pressing Control uh, S and now the file will be saved with these changes in it. So now we want it to appear on GitHub. So how do we do that? We can go to the uh, source control panel, shift con uh, Control Shift G, um, and we can now see that I have two uh, uh, repositories open here, and now we're interested in the project's 2023 test repository here. And you can see that there's a list of changes here. So it's saying that, okay, this readme file has changed. It has sort of an M here. It's, it's a modified uh, file. It, if it's a new file, it's, an, it's a U, it's an untracked file. If it's a deleted file, it's a D here. And uh, we can sort of see that we can click on this. And then we will get off sort of a full working tree, as it's called, of, of what has changed in this file. So that's good sort of to get an overview. Let's close this again. You can also here, you can revert all the changes in this file, which is sometimes useful if you've done something that you shouldn't have done or similar to that. But what we can do now is that we can say, okay, we want to commit these, these changes. So let's say that I say here that I have added group name and group members. And then I press commit and thinking a bit. And then I say, okay, now I want to sync these, these changes. And I'm syncing this. And it's taking a short amount of time. And now everything is done here. I can go back to, to, to GitHub and I can refresh the page. And now we can see that the contents of the, uh, of the readme file has changed on GitHub as well. So we have successfully uploaded code here. It also works the other way around. So let's say that I actually wanted to have removed these things because that's, I want to add this later perhaps. So uh, here I get into editing the file uh, online and I edit it to this and I can actually also commit changes uh, directly on GitHub. So I can make this, this, this change here. Let's just go out and see that now this has actually changed. Now, if I go, back to, to VS Code, I still have the same file here. Nothing has changed here so, so, so far. So to, in, to ensure that that should happen, then I need to synchronize. So I can open the control panel and I can write sync, or I can use the, the point and click out here and I can say I want to synchronize changes. 
And if we do that, then it's fetching and then it's merging in these changes. And now I have the same uh, as on, uh, on, on GitHub. So one thing that, that's also useful is that if you go back to the Explorer and you have, uh, have a file here, then you can also go, go down into the timeline here and you can see uh, exactly what has happened, at, at which point in time were the uh, updates uh, on, this, uh, on this file. So that's where you can remember, okay, how did they actually look a few uh, commits, uh, uh, commits back. Okay, so this is basically how you uh, uh, both uh, download content, upload, upload content, and download uh, content again. And you basically only need to, to know these, uh, uh, these few uh, commands. And that's often all that needs to be done. Sometimes some problems can, uh, can be created uh, for you. So. Let's try to create a problem here, a so-called merge conflict. So if I go to GitHub and I, let's say, I, I don't want it to be teachers. I want it to be admins instead. That's fine, I, I save here. So now it's now it's admins. But let's say that, that on my local repository, I'm also thinking about changing this and here I, I haven't synced anything yet, so I'm just trying to say I want to count this to be lecturers. Uh, so let's say that that's that's what I wanted. So let's save that, and now I, I want to 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 push these these changes up up here. So I go into the control control source uh, source control panel. I can see I have a change. It's modified. Okay, I say that this is a new group name. Um, and I commit this. That sounds good, right? Uh, and I want to sync these changes. And I'm oh that that that's nice. Oh, I got a problem here. It's oh I have I have a merge conflict because now I have changed things as, at the same time, both remotely and locally. So that's a problem. Uh, the sort of the best thing is actually to avoid this at all, and ensure that you always sync before you start working so that you're sure that you're not changing lines that are different on the remote uh, part. But sometimes this, this can happen. You can try to resolve it using the, the interface in, in, uh, in VS Code here. So let's say that I actually say, okay, it's, it's fine, I will, I will accept what the incoming change is, is here. So I'm accepting this, so I, I will use the admins. I will be saving uh, this file and now I will be saying, okay, I have some merge changes here. So let us actually, let us say we want to stage this. So that's that's what we want. We want to, to add this here. And then let's, let's commit this and let's, let, let's sync this. So now we ended up succeeding with, with what, what we have done and our, our repository is, uh, is fine, and we have, have have the admin things, and other changes we want to make would also have been been part of this now. So that's what one, one way to uh, to do it. Sometimes this this can be a complicated thing thing to do, and the best thing is simply to sort of start start all over from recloning the repository and trying to add the changes that you have made locally uh, one by one by one, but where you start from a repository that's fully update with what is uh, remotely. Uh, um, so that's, that's sometimes the only way forward. Okay, uh, thank you uh, for today. That was all I had to say.